Hey everyone. All right, so I'm Grandmaster Magesh Panchanathan. So welcome to today's um, session. Let's go ahead and get started. So today the theme I want to work on is uh, some slow strategic plans and ideas in general. Um, and um, I have a couple of games that I want to go over. So this is the first one. Um, again, I don't want to tell you who the players are or anything until we see it and later on we can talk about it. Um, so this is the first position. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go ahead and get started. I usually like to always start with some basic observation. So before you jump into moves, plans, calculation, anything, it's very important to understand the position. So I really, really believe in this. And I think um, most, uh, most players and top players and coaches would probably agree with me on this is that uh, you can make a bunch of decisions already if you understand the position well. You don't even need to calculate. It's just like a, an immediate thing. So let's start by adding some basic observations in this position. You can use the chat. Tell me the things that you see that you think are relevant in this position, right? There are a bunch of factors that could help you navigate through. Very nice. I'm getting a bunch of ideas already. So queen and king are in the same diagonal. Uh, she's Zoe, Zoe is saying black is a bishop pair. Good point. E5 is a strong pawn. Austin says the king hasn't castled and the pawn on A4 is weak. Interesting. Knight on F8 is bad. Open C file. Okay. Oh, my arrows got broken there. Okay, so we have the open C file. White is not developed, black can look to attack. So Austin, you're jumping the gun there. Let's not jump, jump get to any moves yet. Uh, black is underdeveloped on the king side, okay? I mean, more than king side, I, I believe, more than underdeveloped, I believe the knight is what you're talking about, which is not in a great place. Black is kind of passive, white is not developed, black can look to attack, okay. Very nice, so I have a bunch of um, observations. And Sir Wagner, E4 and C4 look very well, very good for the knight. Okay, fair enough. These are strong squares, but I'll come back to uh, how important these squares are as we go. So let's uh, discuss all the things that we just talked about, and let's also uh, how would I look at it, right? So the first thing always is pawn structure. When you look at these things, we should always start with pawn structure. Yeah. And uh, I mean, someone noticed it early on. This is the French uh, pawn structure you have right here. You can tell by this pawn, small little pawn chain, uh, which is very common in the French advance. So what we have is a strong pawn on e5, like uh, someone pointed out, and it's going to give me more space. So white has more space, right? So that's a simple establishment. Black has a pair of bishops. Again, this was mentioned, a reasonably simple establishment, right? Um, and white actually has the right kind of bishop, right? That's kind of a small thing to notice. Even though white lost a bishop, the bishop that white lost is a dark squared bishop, which is not so bad because the pawns are in dark squares, which means I'm controlling all the dark squares, yeah? And now coming back to, uh, I think, Sir Wagner, your point was to look at these squares, but guess what? I have a bishop. So even though you can try to get there, it's not that big of a weakness, right? If this bishop were to be on a dark square, I would immediately say c4 and b4, e4 would be big. And also c4, you have to watch out for b3 is still possible. It's not an outpost, right? All right. So uh, both kings are not castled. This has been mentioned. The knight on f8 is stuck in the, um, you know, in a bad, bad kind of position. And uh, white is also not developed and black is also not completed. Um, the open c file was mentioned. I think that's pretty useful, yeah? All right, very good. Now, what I'm going to ask is I want you to pick only one of them, right? So you have mentioned a bunch of factors. And remember this, I'm also going to ask your preference to see if you want to play white or black. Of course, I started from black's perspective. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, this is black's turn to play, so it's here. So you could play this as white or play this as black. So let's start by first picking only one factor. So of all the things we mentioned, what would be the biggest yeah, you could combine two, Aradhya, good question. So you could combine a couple of things together. I mean, you can't be that white and black in uh, in these factors. 
So you could definitely pick out a couple. And uh, with that, also give me your preference, white or black. You would like to play white or you would like to play black. So let's do a um, couple of minutes for this. All right, time is up. So I think I got mostly black, some white. So seems like we got a little bit of a combination. Okay. Um, uh, Ryan, I see your exclamation point. Go on, tell me what do you see, what you want to talk about. Yeah, so personally, I prefer black because there are possible expansion ideas on the queen side, like on b5. Queen side, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And um, that would be your main factor then in your, uh, in your whole discussion, yeah? Yeah. Because of uh, what, maybe this pawn? Yeah, that, that's a weakness. Plus, you can also play pawn to b4, kind of restricting his pieces. So b5 to try to target this, or you mean just simply play b4 to expand? P possibly, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Possibly both, yeah. <coughs> All right, very nice. And uh, let's see, Angela, who can c5, prefer to play black, okay? So looks like most of you want to play black. Austin, what do you, um, I see your exclamation point. Tell me what do you think? Um, so most of you guys are citing that uh, black should be better because he can play b5, but... Now that I take a look at it, I'm actually realizing like there is no way to solve the knight on f8 in the long term. Like there's just so many problems connected with this knight. Like it's basically like black is playing a piece down. I mean, if you ever play g5, white can go h5 and the knight still can't get out. I mean, going to h7 doesn't really help. Uh, if you want to go to d7, you have to move the bishop first, but the bishop doesn't really have a good square either. And also, if you move the bishop and then you move the knight, then the pawn on e6 is going to be undefended. Indeed. So you probably have to move the king first, but if you move the king, then the, it's going to be sitting on the same file as the rook. So then you could probably have to move the king again, but they won't be defending the pawn. So it's kind of like all of these issues come together to create a huge problem, mostly centered around this really bad knight on f8. Uh, I think it's just, it's just a terrible piece. Like, okay. there's just no way to make use of it. So perfect. Yeah. So one of the things you're describing is, I guess, the lack of space for black. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm trying to do some things, I'm just kind of stepping on my toe. So it's uh, not really helping um, that I don't have enough space. So fair enough. Right. Okay, good. So I have um, lots of interesting explanations and I'll tell you what my take on the position is. And of course, it's also because I, I know this position and I've um, analyzed it. So the biggest factor in this position is this which was mentioned, I think some of you talked about this, but the king on d1 actually seems to be a very, very, very big problem. So um, it's, and I would say in this position, it surprisingly turns out to be the most important factor. Uh, I take that king and put it somewhere else. I think white is completely fine, but with the king on d1, and if someone asked me, can I combine some factors? I would have actually liked the combination of the king on uh, D1, uh, the rook open file, and maybe the pawn on A4 combined together, I would say is what is going to create a serious, serious issues for white. So let's take a good look at this, right? Uh, so when you look at long-term plans and big, big ideas in general, you, you think, okay, lots of things are looking good. But when you realize that if you, if you look at this thing in specific, how does white actually take care of this pawn. I mean, it's just almost impossible. I want to play b3, but it's just not easy to play b3 with all the dark square weaknesses around right now. And also it's not even easy, uh, practically possible, right? So if the queen moves, how do I defend this? Is the rook wants to challenge with rook c1, but this is always hanging. And this is a little bit of a problem, right? Um, yeah, there's always knight c3, bishop b4 idea as possible, right? So this is the serious... Uh, issue for white. So now that we know that black is better and white king on d1 is the biggest deciding factor for this, right? In general, structurally, white's superior, right? Stronger pawn structure, more space, uh, correct kind of bishop, right? I have a lot of key squares to play with. Knight f4, for example, someone mentioned is good. Um, and so strate strategically, I think white is fine, right? I have enough factors to be okay. But in this particular situation, this is becoming a problem, right? So let's see, what should Black's next move be? I, I think Black's play uh, was was close to perfect in this game. 
um, for the next few moves. And I really, really liked it. And that's the reason I wanted to pick this particular game. So I'll give again a couple of minutes. Now remember this, nothing is going to happen instantly. So you have lots of things to do for black. And if you're playing black here, what would you do and how would you start? So I'm going to give you like two minutes. Think about it. There's no rush. You don't need to chat anything right away. So Arno, I'm not sure what you're trying to do with bishop to b5. I don't think you can get bishop to b5. Ah, nc3 and bishop b5 for white is what you're talking about. I think Austin is also mentioning that. So one of the key things I'll give you as a clue is this is subtle play. It's not in your face kind of a play. Um, black has a long way to go. Even though white's king on d1 is bad, um, you all talked about some of the problems black has um, in his own camp. So it's a question of how can you slowly improve your position. Zoe, I think um, the knight on f8 is possible to move, but you have to think about the defensive things that the knight does too. Don't forget that. I guess the plans I've seen so far are this. Rook c6 and rook b6 was one of the plans. a6, b5 was one of the plans. Uh, rook c4 was a plan considered and... Uh, I think, what else? Let me see. Bishop to b4 was one of the plans. And knight h7 followed by g5 has been considered. King f7 with the idea of probably running the king to g7 is also part of this. Oh, Aradhya, I didn't see what um, you had done. Let's call you. Go on, Aradhya. What do you have? Tell me. I don't know, like, um, like my idea was to go, um, rook c6, like, knight h7, rook c6, um, rook b6, and then go, like, after king c2, like, king f7, go rook c8, and I don't think black has that many problems in that position, if I get all the... Okay, so you want to go rook b6, uh, rook c6, rook b6, how are you getting rook to c8 again? I didn't get it. Are you no. getting rook to c8? Yeah, like nine, I'll put my nine on h7, king on f7. Okay. So, and eventually getting this rook to c8 and rook to b8, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Austin, actually, that's a question for this, That's which is fair. So, one thing I want all of you to remember, this is in a practical game, this is never as one-sided as we're discussing right now. I know a lot of these plans that are being discussed are like almost like it's one-sided, like why it doesn't exist, right? Um there is one serious consideration. The bishop can go to d3 at some point for sure. This rook will come to f1 for sure. This knight can either go to c3 or go to f4. Again, lots of these possibilities are there for white. Yeah? And uh, while you're making these plans, you have to think about it. And uh, even though someone early on talked about this idea, I think Arnau... Um, so it stops with well, black and continue. Okay, so Arno, I think you gave me one of the uh, important plans, which was actually played in the game. Uh, one step at a time. Rook h7 and rook f7 was played. Again, I like this because activate one piece at a time. Most of your pieces are in good place. The knight is actually doing a defensive job. It might seem like a really bad piece, but without this knight, if I just attack this pawn, I think white would have serious pressure on black king. But... Luckily, this knight is holding everything together, right? So the plans like knight f4, bishop d3, or queen d3 are absolutely neutralized right now thanks to this knight. Now, one more thing I want to clarify is this is too dangerous, guys. So anyone who's trying to play this knight h7, g5, or g5 plan on the king side, I think you're not playing to your strength, right? Remember, once we decide the factors were actually this, this, and this, Right? So since we put a4 as a factor, I would also add this as a strong piece. So when you have all your factors on the queen side, you should not be playing on the king side, right? And that's the reason why you make these observations. Your observations should kind of guide you to what you're doing and how you're playing. So you should definitely play on the um, king side, right? So rook h7 and rook f7, like I said, it's just the simplest thing to start with, right? You sh it should almost be like a no-brainer. I think you should be able to get the rook out, yeah? So in the game, rook h7 was played. White played knight c3. And rook f7 was played. And white played bishop e2. All right. First step, done. Now the second step also, I will kind of give it a little bit because um, this was also considered as part of a plan. I think Austin wanted to play a6, which is definitely a key move. By the way, 
all along this queen takes b7 is possible but it loses to this check and after b3 you simply take yeah the fact that the rook is hanging the king is in bad place so now you see how much of a trouble right the king is super stuck and that's that's the real problem so white could not touch the pawn obviously and now um, austin had considered this plan early on a6 okay the plan is very simple i'm going to play b5 it's also a prophylactic move stopping some knight b5 or bishop b5 ideas in the future so it's also a little bit of prophylaxis but it also creates a threat simple enough right so now white is facing some serious issues i cannot just do random moves because you play um, pawn to b5 what if knight d4 and knight f4 and bishop d3 i think asked in this question you were asked early on so i just don't no, i don't think this is for this position okay so a6 was played and white played king to c2 to deal with this threat i know it looks like a super awkward move but this was played so now i want us to try to play for black what should black do now i think it's beginning to look even more interesting for black now right initially we thought we thought black has a lot of pressure but now look at this 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 and the two bishops are pointing in good direction there's pressure here this is also active and the knight like i said is a good defensive piece so i think black is doing fantastic here uh, but what would you do how would you improve because white is holding everything together there is no b5 and uh, you can play bishop b4 or i'll always take that pawn i'm still defending c3 so austin thinks alpha zero is going to play king d3 and king e3 yes oh i have to keep an eye on the waiting room okay so let's uh, think of some plans what are you going to do for black now i think the first improvement of rook h7 rook f7 is done a6 is also a good improvement now what again the more i hear from all of you the better it is for the class so jump in jump in give me some moves give me some ideas we can talk about it so one good thing in this case is guys um all of you remember this this time we're almost playing like it's a single side plan white actually has very little to do to improve the position i mean like white doesn't have a lot of things um to be done for example if i try something like rook d1 and rook d3 the minute i leave the rook on a1 hanging you get b5 so that's a problem i cannot play some rook d1 rook d3 ideas i cannot leave this rook out of here because bishop takes a4 is a problem right Uh, I cannot put the rook on a3, and rook on a2 is almost going to trap my queen. I mean, like even I could play rook a2 and try to play some I don't know king b1 kind of ideas. I mean, but white literally has nothing much happening. That's my main point. The next game, so we're almost here. All right, guys. So time is up. Let's go ahead and look at uh, what was the best plan. I see lots of interesting ones. Who are uh, Chen? I think. <laughs> very long rerouting a night kind of a plan but i'm going to ask arnav uh very are now can you tell me what your plan is ah okay arnav doesn't have a mic unfortunately all right let's see if anyone else came close to this plan so not exactly so but if someone else wants to talk by the way even if you have given me a move you can raise your hand go for it um i will call if someone new raises if not i can still always talk to someone who has already given me some ideas no big deal anyone who wants to talk about their plan yes uh daniel it is actually black to move here we are looking for like some kind of a plan here so let's go austin go on oh uh, wait me right not not the other austin Yeah, I unmuted you. So yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, right. So I actually came up with two plans. So one of them was moving the knight and then moving the king to g7 and then just moving the knight back because I feel like the king might be safer there. But at the same time, it, I guess it doesn't really improve the black position that much. But why well, can't do anything? I mean, why not? Um, and the second it does improve was, to some extent. So I mean, your king would be a little bit safer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second plan I had was to move the bishop to b6, and then consider playing rook takes f3, and then after bishop f3, like, well, okay, let's say bishop d8, rook f1, 
uh, bishop b6, and then white plays something like rook f, well, probably not rook f2. He actually doesn't have that. Maybe king okay, b1. So he played... Maybe something king. like king b1, and then you can take on f3 and you want to take on d4, yeah? Yeah, take on d4 and then take on e5, and then I have the potential to play like d4 and crash through. So I think it's an interesting plan, but I think it's a little complicated. I don't think it's uh, so dominating. So one thing I would want to do from a position like this, is I want to keep the domination. Black is dominating. I really want to keep that, right? So I think the problem with this plan is that it may make the position a little unclear and give more chances for white. So that's the only thing I would say I, I want to think about this, right? But otherwise it's pretty interesting and thanks. So let's see um, in chat, Aradia suggesting knight 7 king f8, king g7, but it doesn't really do anything, yeah. All right, so the point is bishop b4 is actually a pretty nice move, adding pressure here and not letting anything move. This is fine, right? And the simplest point is if you if you attack this bishop knight one more time, it's game over. And I don't know why uh, anyone really didn't want to do that. Simply attack the knight, yeah? Now that I've given you a very direct plan, I'll give you one more minute. Can, can you just find out ways to attack the knight and then see that's it? It might just finish a game right there. Because like I told you, I cannot play rook d1, rook d3 because of b5. I cannot move this rook out of the way. And I cannot move the king out of the way. I really don't seem to have a lot of options. So if you figure out a way to attack the knight, I basically have to resign as white. Rook hc1 is an option, but what do I do after that? Um... Rook at c1 and king to b1, yeah? Let's say rook at c1, king to b1. I don't still think I can move my knight after that also. Yeah, even after that, I don't get to move my knight. That's the worst part. Aradi, you found it in a much roundabout way. No, Austin, knight a2 at that point will might not work because um, by that time, if I doubled up, one is maybe a4 is hanging. Rook takes c1 check. Yeah, maybe knight a2 is a little bit possible. Yeah. G5 is too Austin Tang. I think G5 is a little too um, unnecessary, I would say. You know, it just opens up the king side for no reason. White has zero plan, active plan. So don't let me do, do anything. Okay. Um, so I have some roundabout ideas. I think Troy, you have a simple plan for me. Do you want to tell me what your plan is? Let me see if I can find you here. Try. And it's just to go king d8, bishop b8, and rook f c7. Yeah, simply get the bishop out of the way and then get the rook to c7, right? Right, and even I can go g5 later and then put my bishop on g6. Absolutely. That could be later. That's right. Yeah, possibly. I mean, as long as this bishop doesn't go to d3 or is not on d3, you can always have this idea of g5, yeah? So... That's all, um, guys, as simple as that. That's basically what happened um, in this game. And it was very straightforward. So now, I mean, if I show you the moves, it'll be super easy. Um, so what happened was after bishop b4, rook f, uh, king c2, um, king d8 was played. Wait, actually, white's move. So rook f1 was played, king d8 was played. Oh, by the way, I should have played rook f1 on the board. My bad. Um, but I don't think it changed anything at all. Uh, rook a2, bishop e8, rook a1, rook f, c7, and white actually resigned. And I know this game very well because, unfortunately, I was playing white. Not one of those games that I'm proud of. I did not even realize the rook is coming to c7 until much later. So I was like, okay, I'm stuck in a position. I'm going to hang in there. And then he plays bishop e8, and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm, this is not really happy. I mean, by the time he played king d8, I already knew that he's going to do it. But until he played king d8, I just didn't realize it. So this was a Kobian who's playing black. And uh, he's a French expert. He's played French for years. And like I said, until he played king d8, it just didn't hit me that he's going to bring the rook to c7. Yeah. I was thinking that I'm just still holding things together. By the way, from the starting position, I realized I got into an awkward position. So earlier in the game, I tried something. And once I reached that uh, position we started the discussion in, I realized that I've messed up something and my king is stuck. So I was like, okay, I need to figure out some way to hold things. But I kind of did a miserable job in that. But why I like this game is just, I think, the precise piece maneuvers and exactly what Black did, right? Beautiful coordination, just get the rook in, 
uh, first rook h7, rook f7, setting the rook in a nice place, nice place, and then the rook gets to the next step, rook c7, right? And I, I literally resigned because there's no way to defend c3. So I think this is the power of peace maneuvers, right? Subtle peace maneuvers. So that's um, our first game. Now let me start the second one. Actually, I was going to spend more time on the second one. Turns out that I ended up spending more time on this one. We will do the same thing we did. First factors. Remember, we cannot make progress. We cannot do much without doing factors. Let's do all the factors. I think it's easy to recognize the opening. Shouldn't be that difficult. I don't see anyone here raising hand. Okay, I guess we can move on. But I do see the comments. So uh, I think you're picking white. And I think that's kind of obvious here. Yeah? So we have all four minor pieces on the board. I think the biggest factor, what is the biggest factor? Let's actually do that. Can all of you type in something? But what do you think is the biggest factor in this position? Okay, I think pretty much everyone's giving me the right um, point here. It's space, yeah? I simply have too much space as white and black is quite cramped. I mean, black can still fight because black's position is solid, but very cramped, like most of you are pointing out. Now, there are several ways to continue this game. And um, this was played by Carpo, one of my favorite players. And again, a very, very um, interesting game. I really like this game personally a lot. So that's the reason I want to share this one. And there are multiple plans. Again, I mean, there's no one way to continue here. And it's again, that's why it's very fascinating to see how Carpo actually continued and what he did. So I think the first plan of what white should do is let's talk about improving our pieces and just kind of, um, you know, same kind of plan as what we did in the last position. Slow, subtle improvements, piece maneuvers, right? And that's all happened in the last game. We'll try to do the same thing in this one too and see how Carpo manages this, yeah? So the first move, I'm hearing, I'm getting some suggestions. Austin has a suggestion, anyone else? What is the first move? I don't know, that's like a deep, shuffling already <laughs> quite interesting so i mean this is the starting point of the game there's an important discussion that i want to have later on so i'm just going to move on um, most of you are suggesting some key ideas which is knight e3 or knight g3 i think that's fair yeah um, both these moves head towards f5 which you kind of pointed out would be a mini outpost i mean like g6 is possible but it will mean that i will get some dark squares to play on yeah uh, but black has a common plan to play g6, bishop f8, bishop g7. Um, so again, the game can go in so many different ways at this point. So I don't want to really um, spend too much time here. So Carpo starts with knight e3. Uh, my idea is that he also keeps an eye on the queen side and also has a chance to go like knight g4 or something if g6 was played. So, I mean, the knight on g3 would be completely blunt if black plays g6. So he goes knight e3. And black actually allows knight f5, does not touch um, the, the idea of playing g6. He just doesn't do it. Again, it's one way to play. It's possible. You know, sometimes you can even take this. But here I would say taking is very dangerous because once I take here, it's just like, you know, more space. As it is, black was just super weak, um, I mean, with space. And if he, if he does this, that's it. I'm just going to <laughs> pawn roll on the king side. And black has to just sit and watch. This looks pretty sad. So he doesn't take on f5. So what, what does white do next? How, how can white improve? I think there are two or three plans that you can easily do here. Um, if anyone wants to talk about it, I would love to hear your idea. Or if you want to do chat, do that too. But put an exclaim if you want to talk. Interesting. I think there is one common plan. And since I'm hearing this a lot, I'm going to say this out because Carpo did not play this. Uh, g4 and g5 is being suggested quite a bit and I think it's a fair enough reasonable plan. Um, I have played this as white and black and I think g4 is very reasonable. And uh, you can play king h2, rook g1 ideas, you can actually pawn storm um, after h4, g4, g5, h4, h5 and like try to push all the pawns up. Um, so it's I think very reasonable. But this was not played in the game. This idea of g4, g5 was not played. There was a, there is another plan. Let's try something else. But um, Okay, Austin, I'm not so sure why I played bishop g5 to do that. Who are, we did not play g4. Carpo uh, did not play g4 in the game. So Aradhya, your plan 
I'm not so sure why I played my rook on g1 if I'm not going to play g4. Ah, you played h1. Sorry, my bad. Okay, that's very interesting. Evan, I have no idea what you're saying. What what is hundred percent done? <laughs> okay, so I think I got this plan partially from some of you. Austin, May, good job. I think you're um, getting the partial idea of this. Um, it uh, what that was added with one more small. Um, it, it it did include pawn. Um, attack as well. It's not completely avoiding a pawn attack. So Carpo decides to attack on the G file with the pieces, not actually with a pawn stomp, right? Um, given that there is a direct potential for a rook lift, yes, rook lift. So he sees the potential and then he wants to attack on the G file. So to go along with the G file attack, obviously I cannot push the G pawn. So he decided to go with the H pawn expansion, right? So with a combination of h5, knight h2, rook e3, and rook g3, I think white is adding a lot of pressure, right? Knight h2, knight g4, rook e3, and rook g3, and then h4, h5. I mean, knight doesn't even have to go to g4 yet, right? So that's basically the plan that he went for. Again, I don't think it's uh, just like one way to go kind of a situation yet. I, I just like this plan um, where he continues to expand. And black. Okay, knight d8, knight f7 is all a very common idea for black in this setup because this knight was so badly stuck on b7, needed to find um, a good square for the knight, and he does reroute it, right? And this is where this h4, h5 comes in very handy, you know, because when this knight comes to f7, black actually can play g6, right? So if he didn't play h4, h5, right, with the knight on f7, black would have played g6. And then the whole situation for you, which was based on the knight on f5, you will have to come back. So anticipating Black's plans is one of the key things in this game. You will see Karpo's brilliance in prophylaxis, uh, as well as improving. So you'll be improving his position while he's stopping his opponent's plan, which is uh, ridiculously good. So, okay, h4, h5 was played. And now the rook lift happened. Knight g5 and rook... Uh, actually, he decided to keep this knight to add pressure onto this. I'll just go over the next two moves. He plays rook g3, and then he actually plays knight to f3. So here, black has a tough choice. Either I trade knights, or uh, and then allow a complete attack on the g file, and I think white is very well placed, or play h6 and give up all the light squares. So black decided to play h6 here. I mean, I don't envy him. I just don't know what good options black has. Um, knight takes f3 looks extremely scary as well, right? I mean, like, think about this. I have a queen, rook, a knight, and this bishop, and the pawn on h5. All of them attacking right now. With the kind of space I have, I, I can't um, out completely, um, you know, take away the option of this rook also getting into the game. Maybe also this bishop. So, yeah, I just don't like the situation either. So, in the game, h6 was played. I'm going to make the next couple of moves and then we're going to spend time on the next critical point of the game. A5 was played with the idea of A4, of course, creating counterplay and Carpo stops this. So here pawn takes, pawn takes, and now okay, he is giving up the B4 square. So he's kind of conceding something. He is stopping this A4 where he kind of black opened up the queen side completely. But to be able to do that, he had to concede the b4 square. So he's giving an outpost to his opponent. Knight a6 was played. Now, this is the point I want to stop. Okay, so how can you deal with this? Actually, even here, I will play a couple of more moves because he played queen e2 and rook a7, yeah. Okay, let's stop here. This is definitely a point where I would like to have more discussion. So again, I encourage you to talk. So if you have some ideas, feel free to talk. There's no move that's bad. There's no idea that's bad. We can always talk about it and um, and see how you're going to improve. Okay, what would you do as white here? How would you improve? So you can play bishop to d2. Hua, is that an exclamation for talking? So let me give you a chance. Or is that an exclamation for a good move? Uh, it, yeah, both actually. So that <laughs> one was bishop d2. Since you're not going to play rook b4, uh, b2, I mean. 
Uh, Bishop C3. Why not Bishop C3? Right? Maybe, but like I, 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 I think it's just too much. So, so assuming he plays Rook A B7, I will play Bishop C3. And now, if you play Knight B4, I play Bishop D1. And now the Queen said, now that the Queen said is safe, I will go to the King side and see what I will do. But that's just step one. So. So why is the Queen side safe with the Bishop on C3 and not on C1? The, the thing is, there's the B4 square, and I just want to take it, just completely take it away from him. So are you planning to take on B4, or you just want to keep an eye on B4? I want to keep an eye on B4 so his rook doesn't come there and harass my pawns. Fair enough. I don't think that's nothing. So the rook on the B file is going to be very strong, and your bishop is still not developed. So I no. like your idea. Good job. So the bishop going to C3 is actually the first step of this um, phase. I think this really helps. It also keeps an eye on this A5 pawn. In the, in the future, if the knight on b4 ever moves, that a5 will always hang if the queen is not on d8. So, uh, and then also in the future, if the rook ever gets into b1, this bishop on c1, king on g1 is just a pain. We don't want that, right? All right, so that did happen in the game. Bishop c3, knight b4, bishop d1, exactly as it is, okay? Um, now what? Who wants to, again, I'm going to give some time. All of you can think about this again. How will you improve your position next? And Black is doing something very simple. I'm going knight b4, knight a6, yeah? Because I just want to play rook b1. You play bishop c2, Aradi, I'm going to come back knight b4. The problem is if you give up your bishop for a knight, you're going to weaken some squares on the b file. As long as you have these two bishops, you're guarding all of it. If you, if I allow knight takes d3 or something. By the way, this is an interesting question I was going to ask, but I guess I didn't. Carpo did not allow this trade. Why not? This looks like a reasonable trade. Why is he not allowing this knight takes? That knight's an outpost on b4. This is a really bad bishop on c2. What is going on? Who can tell me? b3 is weak. Actually, is not the biggest deal, guys. I think b3 weakness can be dealt with. a4 pawn will become weak. Hmm, not so much. By the way, if I have to guard b3 and b1, what other piece do I have? Of course, I have knight to d2, yeah? I also have my queen, but simply knight to d2 will take care of the other two light squares. So if you ask me, I would really value the bishop on c3. If I trade the bishop on c3, this rook will get to b2. And it'll be very difficult for me to stop that. But if I trade the bishop on c2, it's not the end of the world. I can always play knight d2. So why would Karpo do such a thing? It seems like a positional, positionally bad move for black to play knight takes c2, and yet... Carpo is stopping this. Is not allowing this. Why? Royal, fantastic. Can you tell me what your plan is? Um, knight h2 and try to get the bishop to g4. What happens when the bishop gets to g4? You could trade it with um, black's dark square, uh, light square bishop. Yep, fantastic. So again. Carpo's evaluation of this position is really fantastic, right? You would actually think this knight is the strongest piece with an outpost, but no, he values this bishop as the strongest piece, which is right. Because with the amount of light square weakness that white black has, that bishop is extremely important for black. So if you get rid of that bishop, white is just going to kill black over the light squares, right? So he doesn't want to trade the bishop because he thinks he can trade this bishop for that bishop. Not for this knight. He doesn't want this knight. Even though it looks nice, it's not doing anything, right? So he, he lets the knight be as it is and then plays bishop d1. Okay, so knight a6 was played. I guess this move everybody should easily calculate. Yep, Austin is giving me the move. I want some more of you to tell me what white would do. an easy point. Let's see everyone get it. Let's go. What do you play as white? Type in the move. We want to stop rook to b1. And we don't want to repeat bishop to c2. Good. That's the easiest question I can ask all day. Very good. I'm getting a lot of answers. Now, good. Knight to d2. Knight to d2, right? So, knight to d2 was played in the game. Oh, just played. 
And I would say the one, the last real question here. So black is simply going back and forth. So the last two moves, if you think about it, he's just going knight a6, knight b4. And saying, you know what, how are you going to change it? Because if you move your knight, I will go knight it. And again, try to play rook b1. So here comes the next most important part of the game, um, in my opinion. What will you do? How will you improve? Remember this, I want you to think about Black's plan. I want you to think about everything and then play. How will you improve? So Aradhya, I don't want you to switch plans. We all know what White's plan is, right? We kind of know why Carpo did, um, why Carpo avoided the bishop trade. It's okay, Austin, no problem. Why did he avoid the bishop trade? What did he want to do? What did Carpo want to do? Yeah, he wanted to play bishop to g4 for sure, yeah? So let's stick to that plan, but there are problems. I don't want you to allow counterplay. For example, I think Austin was suggesting queen f1. The minute you play bishop to g4, I will play knight c2 followed by knight d4. Now I think you have given me something to play with. I still think white's better, but you have just given me something to play with. If you play queen e1, bishop g4, knight c2 will be even more deadly. I will get you, I'll get a fork. So how are you going to get bishop g4? Rook c1, you will immediately run into knight a2. Unfortunately, all these tiny ways that you're trying to improve things, you're running into some problems. So be very careful. How are you going to improve? By the way, I see it's already eight o'clock, but we should probably finish in a few minutes. We'll just wrap up this game. If you guys have some time, just hang around. I think this is a great game. Um, so you should definitely see how Carpo achieved this. That is right, Austin. That knight is annoying. I mean, black has nothing. Come on. I'm just barely getting anything of a counterplay and you cannot be annoyed by that. Just deal with it correctly and then you will be fine. So I'll give you one clue. The first clue is um, if the knight has to get out of the way. So I think the knight has to get out of the way. That's kind of clear because the queen needs to move around. And at this point, the queen doesn't have a lot of squares. The queen cannot, I mean, you cannot basically allow black to play knight to c2. This is a no-no. I mean, you cannot let the knight to go there, right? So, well, actually, Aradhya, yes, knight b1, knight a3 is all possible, but knight b1 turns out to be a tactical mistake, right? Um, what are we missing? What are we missing tactically? Yes. Whoops, we run into tactics, right? This is, again, the beauty of a combination. So everything that's combining here is tactics is combining here. You have a long-term plan. You're combining with some sort of tactical thoughts. You're combining with opponent's plans, which is a lot of prophylaxis, right? And getting it done. So how do we actually achieve this? So if the knight needs to move, so the queen can actually be maybe on d2 or somewhere guarding these squares, so the bishop is free to move out here, right? But the problem is if the knight and queen both move, what's happening? Yep, Zoe is right and Austin is right. I have a problem. Well, actually with the queen, I can stop rook b1, right? Imagine I put the queen on, let's say c1, and I'm guarding rook b1. So I'm okay still. Um, if the queen's on d2, and let's say I play something like knight a6, or if the queen's on c2, I just go queen c1, I'm fine. I'm guarding b1. The problem is e4 hangs. So what are you going to do about that? What do you think Arpo did about this? Austin, F3 is the most logical idea, except it kills your whole plan. <laughs> you wanted to play Bishop G4, and the whole idea was based on this Bishop getting to that diagonal. If you play F3, it's done. Austin, good job. Can you talk about the move you just said? Austin, All right, so... Um, this pawn, you need to defend it. You can't defend it with the rook in the corner. You can't defend it with the bishop. So you got to defend it with the rook on g3. So you play rook e3. Rook e3 with double x slam. I like this. Fantastic move. Again, I don't think people will look at this as the most important move, but I really think this is beautiful. The way Carpo is solving his problems is just 
really, really nice. Yeah. So he starts with Rook E3. By the way, okay, at some point, if Black wants to play F5, it's, uh, it's very much possible. I don't think Black really opened up the position at all. Um, but F5, I would probably just take and then play some Knight, uh, I don't know, Knight H4 back. And I think your light square weakness will still be even worse because if this diagonal opens up, it's even worse. So F5 is possible, but was never played in the game. But watch what Karpo does. He plays Rook E3. And now the knight gets out. And now I could actually move the queen and the e4 pawn will not be hanging. That's the whole idea of this, right? Uh, but also, I believe he was threatening something. Okay, he goes knight g3, which is a little tricky, but I'll just go one more move, bishop to d7. Now comes the last reshuffle. I just need to get my bishop to g4. How will I do it? Let's say I give white four moves. The queen, so black is anticipating what you're doing. He's trying to stop it. How are you going to get the bishop to g4? The last stretch. If you put your knight on f5, you, you get the bishop to g4, but you cannot really trade the bishop, right? The knight doesn't move. That shield is not a bad idea, but I want the bishop to directly face each other and trade. Austin Tang has it. Austin Tang. Do you want to talk about this? Uh, yeah. So I would play knight of one, knight h2, um, queen d2, bishop e2, queen d1, bishop g4. Beautiful. It's just that he did it in the reverse order, making sure the knight is still here, guarding these pawns and guarding these squares. So the idea is pretty straightforward. Queen d2, bishop e2, queen d1. And now the knight goes back to f1, knight h2, bishop g4. So I think that's basically the end of this whole idea, right? Um, after the trade, White has achieved the whole thing without conceding anything. I mean, <laughs> Black is exactly in the same position where it started. Um, maybe you could have played Knight H4 first here, but he plays Knight F1 and Black does play F5 at this point. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Austin's saying White played 20 moves to trade bishops. Yeah. So, from, from for a long time, Karpo's plan was this, right? Um, okay, so after Pawn takes. Knight g3, queen goes back. Okay, you can clearly see this is a terrible bishop and look at the pawn structure. And now f4 is clearly the plan. So he plays queen e2, rook f1, and f4. So takes, takes, and rook e3. So here, I can just show the game, rest of the game just for fun, but you can clearly see why it's dominating, right? The knight that was supposed to be the only consolation for black is actually a useless knight. I have a knight sitting on b4 with a great outpost, but it's just really doing nothing, yeah? So uh, eventually he just broke through with this knight going to f5 and uh, he, he just tactically won the game with this. And then final blow was rook e4. And he's planted two knights on e7 and f7. So this is just a real torture. Wolf Anderson was black, playing black as a pretty strong player and Karpo beat him like this. So after rook takes, rook takes and he just resigned. So Hopefully you guys enjoyed this game. This is a beautiful game. I would definitely suggest looking through it. It's of course there in the database. Um, Carpo was playing white. Wolf Anderson was playing black. And beautiful piece maneuver. Strategy. Strategy. <laughs> Stratego. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, I think we, can, we should be able to wrap up this uh, class. If you have any questions, I can answer that. If not, I think we can wrap it up.